Well, hello and welcome to the next <clears throat> installment on the build process for the uh, cave intrusion detector. I figured after uh, the, uh, the last episode where I stripped a bunch of wires and uh, did all the wiring on the front side of the board, that you weren't really going to be very interested in watching me strip a bunch more wires, tin a bunch more wires, and put them onto the board. So I went ahead and uh, off camera I cut the uh, eight pieces of wire that go on the back side of the board and I stripped them and tinned them and I've soldered six of them into place. So I've only got two left to, to go and those are the uh, white wire and the blue wire in this set. Even on time lapse, soldering and tinning and placing a bunch of wire can get pretty darn old. There, that completes the wiring on the back side of the board. The next step is to install the component uh, boards. We have already installed and soldered down the Arduino. Uh, the next thing to install is the real time clock, and then the light detector, and then the, the last one to put on will be the memory card. So, we'll start with the real time clock. The real time clock goes and here and we need to make sure that we have everything lined up and I do that by looking at the green the green wire is the interrupt and it needs to go to the SQW line the blue wire is this uh, is the IC I2C clock which goes to SCL the white wire is the I2C data, which goes to SDA. You can't see the voltage, uh, the plus and the minus lines from this side because they're on the back side of the board. But if we look carefully at the pins, you can see that the black wire is going to that pin, the red wire goes to that pin, and when we turn them over, that turns out to be ground and VCC, or uh, voltage plus. So everything is wired correctly on that. All we have to do is get it uh, soldered down. This is another place where taping things down works uh, very well. So we'll tape that board in place at least long enough to get the first solder joint done. There, now that that's done. That board is in there solid enough that it's going to stay put while I solder the rest of those lines. And then we inspect it. And now those all look okay. So the next step is to snip the extra length off. And so now the real time clock is mounted. The next chip to mount is the light detector. Again, verifying the connections, the light detector is going to be mounted right there. But it's, you can't see the connections from there because they are all underneath it. So, the way I do deal with that is line up the pins here. So the green wire is interrupt, the white wire is SDA, the blue wire is SCL, and ground and voltage in are on the back side of the board. So there's ground, there's voltage in, and looking at those back here, red wire is voltage in, black wire is ground. So that's all wired up correctly. So we'll put that on. Tape it down. And I actually want to put a little bit of a spacer underneath that 
so that the board sits square on there. So a bit of a popsicle stick works just fine. Okay, inspect it. And that looks good. So, as we did before, the next thing to do is snip off the extra pins, the extra length of pin. Okay, the last card to mount is the memory interface chip. Now I'm mounting that on the back side of the circuit board for two reasons. Uh, first is, if I put it on the front side of the circuit board, there's not enough room with the transistor in there. That's reason number one. And reason number two is that with a memory card in it, it will stick out past the edge of the uh, prototype board a fair bit, and that can affect the size of the jar or, uh, or whatever waterproof connector or waterproof container we put it in. So I've wired this up so that this uh, device goes on the back side of the board, and since I'm putting it on the back side of the board, it points the opposite direction. That way, when you put a memory card in it, the memory card is still inside the perimeter. Now this is a little bit tricky because of the two wires that go underneath it to provide power to the light detector. In order to get this thing nice and squared up, it has to stand up. You can't push the pins all the way down in. You have to, you want it to stand up just a little bit. And so the, again, the way I do that is uh, with a popsicle stick. Once you get that first pin soldered, then the tape and the popsicle stick come off. It's going to stay in place good enough to do the rest of the soldering. And that looks good. Now because we stood that board up off the uh, prototype by a little ways, there's no extra pin length underneath it that has to be clipped off. Almost done. The last thing to do is to put a power connector on it. This is the power connectors that I'm using. Uh, it really doesn't matter very much what kind you get. I suggest getting coaxial. Uh, these can be ordered off Amazon. In pairs, you get a, a female, which is this one, and a male. Uh, Ten pairs of these are about, I don't know, $15 or thereabouts. And so the, the male part will go on the battery holder and the female part goes on the board. And it doesn't matter which set of holes through here are used. I like to use uh, row one. And the inspection looks good. So we'll clip the excess wire off. Okay, and that is the completion. The next step after this is testing. Make sure that it works, and I will save that for another video. Uh, I actually could plug this in right now, and it has the my, my Blinky Blink program on it. Um, actually, let's do that. So here is a battery holder that I've already wired up. For my testing stuff, I use a single battery holder don't need to use the doubles, these are not going in a cave. And I've just wired it to an 18650 with the male end that matches this female end. We'll put a battery in it. And when I plug it in, in a, it should uh, take a second or two or three and then the red light should start blinking. And 
And as you can see, that's exactly what's happening. That's the Blinky Blink program that I wrote, which uh, is really nothing much more than a test. Uh, the next steps after this would be to uh, put a zip tie on the power cord and I zip tie it to this hole and that just keeps it from putting stress on the solder connections. That's one reason why I use the uh, row number one connector over here. That gives me more wire between the zip tie and the connector. There's less, less stuff in there for it to uh, uh, take some stress and also makes it a little bit easier to get underneath it to put a battery into the real time clock and you could of course it would be a little more difficult but you could sneak that wire underneath the memory card and then bring it around and solder it from the back side instead of from the front side it really doesn't matter very much the key point is that you don't want to have any stress going on here at the solder connectors. 